this problem or that problem. It's just held you back and held you back and you've been restricted and you've had this obstacle and that obstacle and this problem and this report from the doctor and this from the economy and this issue in the relationship and this issue with the job. Some of you, you feel like the enemy has pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back and pulled you back. But you know, whenever you declare Jesus as your Lord and you transfer your trust, that God, God, you take a hold of the bow. God, you take a hold of the situation. When God takes a hold of it and releases you, whoo! Being your best with Trey Johnson. So he's saying, I planted you. I want you to produce fruit. How does the fruit come? It comes from seed. Where do we get the seed? We get the seed from the Word of God. Whatever you're going through, go look it up on your phone. Get a God's Promises book. Get the seed. Get the promise. Plant it in your heart. Take the information to meditation, to revelation. That is the process of change and transformation in our life. That, that was really good right there. Information, meditation, revelation, transformation. <laughs> That's what we want in our life, right? Now, track with me for a moment. Let, let's, let's read this scripture first, and then I'll, I'll go back and pick up that thought there. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2 and 3. So the seed of God's Word, wherever you're watching this at, around the world, the seed of God's Word will produce the fruit of God's will. If you believe it, you act upon it, God is no respecter of person. The same access that David had to the blessing, the same access that Moses had to the power of God, the same access that Abraham had, is the same access that you and I have to Almighty God through Jesus Christ. Now, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, For indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them, but the word which they heard did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. For we who have believed do enter that rest, as he has said, I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. The works were finished from the foundation of the world. Now I want us to think about this for a moment, because this is, this is life changing. Go back to God's original plan for man. And you can, you can track Adam. Now, when Adam fell, he separated from God. He lost a sense of relationship. He lost destiny. He lost dominion. He lost authority. He lost the presence of God. He, he lost so much. But Jesus came to get it back for you and I. And it says they had the same gospel preached to them, but it didn't profit them because they didn't mix their faith with it. So are you mixing your faith with what you're hearing? He said, even though all the answers were already finished from the foundations of the world, all their deliverances were already done from the foundation of the world, all the victories were already done from the foundation of the world, all of whatever we need that pertains to life and godliness, it was finished before the foundation of the world. Remember, He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and He never starts something unless it's already finished. So He saw your life, and He went to the end of it, and He has everything you need to live a great life, and then He back it up and you were born onto this earth and every answer is already there. It's already there. But how do we get it? How do we walk in it? How do we experience what He has had for you and I from the foundation of the world? So when you think about the way that Adam thought, Genesis chapter 2 verses 19 and 20. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam. This is how Adam thought, to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. Now I want you to think about the intelligence that Adam had. And so when he was separated from God, he no longer thought vertically. Now he thought horizontally. When he fell, he went from having revelation to now information. 
So now he's moved by what he sees, he's moved by what he feels, he's moved by his experiences out here. Before that, he communed with God to such a degree, he was so sharp in his mind. He wasn't some caveman that, uh, ugh, 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 you know, walked around with a club or something, you know. No, 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 he was, he was brilliant. And, and God didn't name the animals. He said, Adam is so brilliant. He's made in my image and likeness. And I want him to have dominion and authority on earth just like I do in heaven. He brought the animals. And when he brought the animals in front, it started coming out of him. Answers started coming out of him. Because they were there from before the foundation of the earth. But because of his fellowship with God, they came out. Just like your gift, your calling, your assignment. It's been in you from before the foundations of the world. But it only comes to pass as you get in the presence of God and you begin to move in relationship with God. So Adam, think about how he thought and Jesus came to restore us back to the way that Adam thought. He was the first Adam. Jesus was the second Adam. And through Jesus, we are connected back to God the same way Adam was before he sinned in the Garden of Eden. Please hear what the Spirit of God is saying. When a person is separated from God, we, we go back to information. But God wants to take us back to revelation. Adam was in revelation. Adam operated in a spiritual relationship with God that was so powerful, but when he fell, he fell, and now he has information. Before, he didn't have to go to school. Please listen. He did not have to go to school to learn about how birds fly. He did not have to go to school to learn how to name the animals. He did not have to go to school to learn why the water did this and the trees did this and why the earth did. He did not have to go to school. Why? Because he had revelation. He had such an intense relationship with God. God and him fell and God explained to him and God revealed to him and he was intelligent and he was sharp and he walked in dominion and he was powerful but when he fell now he went to information and now man has to go and through books and study and school and everything they have to get all this information but God is wanting to take you and I back to the place of relationship that he reveals his heart to you and his plan to you and his insight to you and his direction for you that it's going to take you above your high school education it's going to take you above your college degree it's going to take you above a PhD it's going to take you above what it looks like in the natural. Through the Word of God, through the Spirit of God, He wants to reconnect us back to relationship and revelation instead of just information. We're so glad that you're joining us today. I want to encourage you to take a moment to go to TreyJohnsonMinistries.com and not only get this product of what you're hearing today, but we have so many other teachings that could add value to your life. There's different topics depending on what you're going through in your life. You know, God wants you and I to overcome, and the Word of God is what changes the way we think. It changes the way we believe. It changes how we live. TreyJohnsonMinistries.com. Get your product today, and let's keep growing. Here at Trey Johnson Ministries, we offer a lot of different things to add value to you, your church, your organization. Maybe you're in the corporate world and you're watching today. I'm an executive director for the John Maxwell organization and we do a lot of leadership development. You know, in order for us to have more experience, more to do more in life, we've got to become more on the inside. And so a couple of times a month, sometimes weekly, we'll have mentorship calls where people call in. I do a leadership development teaching. We open up for question and answers. It's a great time to grow. Also, even over the next several weeks, I'll be calling different corporations and doing leadership development over Zoom or a conference call. Maybe this adds value to you and your organization. Reach out to us at TreyJohnsonMinistries.com and let us come be a part of your growth. We also want to encourage you to leave us your address on the website, TreyJohnsonMinistries.com, and request the magazine. We'd love to get that to you. There's great reading material, great articles, different things that we offer as a ministry. We're honored to be a part of your journey and your growth and your relationship with God. Let's keep making a difference together. God bless you guys.
Romans chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after, adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourself what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in His sight for you. Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude, and put on the new nature, the regenerate self, created in God's image, God-like, and true righteousness and holiness. Now pause. So when we call upon the name of Jesus, instantly we're born again. But then it's a process to change the way we think. He says, so I'm wanting to plant the heavens. God is saying, I'm wanting you to be fruitful. I've chosen you to be fruitful. It's my will that you're fruitful. I put my gifts in you, my callings in you. I give you ideas. I give you vision. He says, so now to prove what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God, I give you my word. As you begin to get a new idea, a new thought that comes from his word and from his spirit, he says, you're going to prove. I want you to, I want you to picture this. So let's just say that my hand... This is, the, this is the plane right here. And when Adam, Adam operated up here, he had a relationship with God. He, he fellowshiped with God. He had thoughts that came from God. But when he fell, he fell down here into what he could see, what he could feel, what he could taste. He went, from, he went to information. Revelation, information. Revelation, information. You get born again. You come into the family of God. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. He says, now I give you my word. And as you get a new idea, it brings you up back to the place of revelation. Because remember, from before the foundation of the world, your answer is already in the word of God. So he gives you his word to bring you from information. And as you renew your mind, you're proven what is a good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. God's heart to get you back to show you what he has had for you before the foundation of the world. God's desire is to get us to see. See. And once we can see God's will, then God delivers it. Once we can see what God has for us, we can walk in it. Once we can see, I'm not talking about with your eyeballs. You look through your eyeballs, but you see with your heart. When you can get His Word, it's going to allow you to see what His will is for you. See yourself as healed. See yourself as blessed. See yourself as victorious. See yourself the way that God does it. How? By getting into His Word and allow the Spirit of God to take you back to what is already yours before the foundations of the world. Man, I'm spitting on myself. This excites me so much. I, I, I just believe that you're seeing what God is saying. Now, now why is this important? Because we've got a job to do. We have a job to do. The, the, the more that I know God, the more I, I want to be. I want you to be where we're supposed to be. There are people that you and I know that are dying and going to hell and that's not God's desire. We have a job to finish. Why is it important that we change the way we think, that we truly know the heart of God because God wants to do work in us and through us to change the world around us? We have a job to finish. We have a job to finish. We have an assignment to finish. We have a purpose to finish. I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. If I was there, I'd want to shove you out of your comfort zone to get into that production zone, to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Be the best you you can be. Listen to what Jesus said. John 17 verse 4. He says, I've glorified you on the earth. I've finished the work which you have given me to do. John 4, 34, Jesus said to them, my, my food, nourishment is to do the will, the pleasure of him who sent me to accomplish and completely finish his work. Listen to the heartbeat of Jesus, the desire that Jesus had. He said, I completed, I did everything I accomplished, everything that God put me on this earth to do. And I want us to accept that same heartbeat. I want to go everywhere I'm supposed to go, Lord. I want to do everything I'm created to do. I want to be everything I'm created to be. I hope that that's a desire that's stirring on the inside of you because you have what it takes to be everything you're called and created to be. You have what it takes to be the business person. You have what it takes to be the man, the woman. You have what it takes to walk in your deliverance. God has already chosen you to bear fruit. He's already equipped you to bear fruit. And He's saying, I want you to see. I want you to get back to that place to see what I've already had have for the from the foundations of the world. Isn't that awesome? Listen, listen to 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. So he answered. Now what's happening here is Elijah, 
um, these, the army has come after Elijah and his servant gets up that morning and he goes to get him a biscuit or I don't know what he went to get him, you know, but he went to get something and he sees all this army out there and he's freaking out, you know. So this is where we pick up. Verse 16, that's Johnson paraphrase, of course. Verse 16, he says, So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Why, why did he say do not fear? Remember, remember the illustration of the hand, or let me use this since I'm right-handed here. Remember the illustration, because when you fear, it locks you down into the natural. Fear locks you down. If you're afraid of the corona, if you're afraid of cancer, if you're afraid of disease, you're afraid of what's going, if you are afraid, it locks you down in the natural. And Elisha says, do not fear. In other words, get a hold to yourself. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Psalms 34 says, God will deliver us from all fear. So we can't kid ourselves. So he says, do not fear. Why? Because fear locks you down to the natural. Fear hinders God from showing up. God will not operate on fear. That's why almost every time you see him show up, the one of the first things he says is, don't be afraid. Don't fear. Almost 365 times throughout the Bible, don't fear, don't be afraid. Why? Because he wants people to know each and every day you're going to have the opportunity to be afraid, but don't take the opportunity. Do not fear because it locks you down to time. It locks you down to the natural. It locks you down to limited resources. Okay, let's keep going. He says, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Verse 17, And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Listen to that. Open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around about Elisha. He was asking God to open up his spiritual eyes because what he was seeing in the natural was talking him out of his faith. It was talking him out of his destiny. Don't allow what you see. Don't allow what you hear on all the different social media platforms or all the news deals. If it doesn't line up with the Word of God, don't you let it talk you out of your faith. God is your protector. God is your healer. God is your deliverer. God is your restorer. But what you see and what you hear and what you talk about and who you hang out with, can talk you out of your faith and it can lock you down where God wants to show up but he can't show up because God operates with faith. Listen to the prayer that Paul prayed and a, a prayer that I pray for, for our partners of this ministry very often because it's important that we see what God has for us. Remember from before the foundations of the world information, meditation to revelation as we're renewing our mind, this is a prayer. God, show us. Let us see what you have for us. Ephesians 1, verse 17 through 19. For I always pray to the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation of insight into mysteries and secrets and the deep and intimate knowledge of him by having the eyes of our heart flooded with light so that we can know and understand the hope to which he has called us and how rich is his glorious inheritance in the saints, his set apart ones, so that we can know and understand what is the Im immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of His power in and for us who believe as demonstrating in the working of His mighty strength. What was He saying? God, flood our inner world with light, with the Word of God, so we can see what is our inheritance. Remember, we're going from the natural, what we can see, taste, touch, feel, to revelation, to the supernatural, to what's been prepared before the foundations of the earth. And Paul is saying, I pray that their eyes are open so they can see. I'm praying for you that your eyes are open, that you can see God as deliverer. You can see God as healer. You can see what you're created to do. You can see the man or woman you're created to be. You can see, you can see... Go with me to, to Mark chapter 10, verse 32 through 34. Because see, the more and the clearer we see God's Word and God's plan, the faster we move, move towards it. So if we don't see very clear, we're not seeing. We're looking through our eyes, but we're not seeing with our heart. We're not going to go towards what God has for us very fast. But the clearer I see it, the faster I go. The clearer I see it, the faster I go. Mark chapter 10, verse 32 through 34. 
Then he took the twelve aside again, and he began to tell them the things that would happen to him. Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles, and they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him, and the third day he will rise again. What was taking place here? The Holy Spirit was showing Jesus the things that were to come, and Jesus was revealing it to the disciples. Acts 10.34 says, God is no respecter of persons, so if the Holy Spirit helped Jesus see what the future looked like, then He will help you and I see what the future looks like. Listen to another place where Jesus is, is explaining the importance of the Holy Spirit. John 16, verses 12 through 14. He says, I have still many things to say to you, but you're not able to bear them or to take them upon you or to grasp them now. Listen to this. But when He, the Spirit of truth, the truth-giving Spirit comes, He will guide you into all truth. He will. He will guide you into all truth, the whole full truth. He will not speak on His own message, on His own authority. He will tell you whatever He hears from the Father. He will give you the message that has been given to Him. He will announce and declare to you the things that are to come, that will happen in the future. He will honor and glorify Me, because He will take, receive, draw upon what is mine, reveal, declare, disclose, transmit it to you. He was saying, the same way the Holy Spirit showed up for me, I'm giving Him to you. You, the Spirit of God, is with us right now. And it's saying, He will. He will. He will help us see. He will tell us truth. He will reveal the message of the Father. He will take us from what we can see, taste, touch, to information. What God has prepared for us before the foundation of the world. He wants us to see that He wants to plant the heavens. He wants us to see that He wants us to bear fruit. He wants us to see us walk in victory. He wants us to see ourselves as forgiveness. He wants us to see Jesus saw something. In the most difficult time in his life, he saw something. He saw you and I coming into relationship with Almighty God, and because he could see it, it was delivered to him. When you can see it, God will deliver it to you. How do you begin to see it? Through his word. You see it from your heart. The help of the Holy Spirit, he helps you see. Hebrews 12, verse 2 and 3. It says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, given the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher, bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross. He could see you and I having relationship with him. I want you to think about that. The Holy Spirit helped him see through the pain. The Holy Spirit helped him see, see through everything to get to you and I. You know, he saw us when we were addicted. He saw us when we were lost. He saw us whenever maybe you have a, a devil that's tormenting you. Maybe you, your sexuality you're confused about. Maybe you don't know why this happened or that happened. The Holy Spirit will help you see Jesus, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no person comes to the Father except through Jesus. The Holy Spirit is present with you right now to help you see the importance of a Savior, and His name is Jesus. I, I want to encourage you right now just to, to go inward. And I want you to look inward. And, and if you were standing before God right now, if you could see yourself standing before God right now, are you certain that you'd spend eternity with Almighty God? Are you certain that if you were to die right now, that you would go to heaven because at some point in time in your life you called upon the name of Jesus? Yeah, Jesus, you know a person doesn't go to hell because of drinking or doing drugs or whoring around. or A person goes to hell because of what they do or don't do with Jesus. It's because a person rejects Jesus that they spend eternity in hell. But when a person accepts, you can be doing all that right now, and if you'll accept Jesus, the life of God comes into you. You can be certain that you'll spend eternity. You can be forgiven. You can be set free. You can be delivered. Just, just keep looking to Him and allow the Holy Spirit to help you see yourself as delivered, healed, whole, complete. Would, would you do that with me right now? Would you yourself call upon the name of Jesus? Would you settle where you're going to spend eternity? How? How you might be saying. It's very simple. The Bible says when a person believes in their heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and declares with their mouth, Jesus, you are my Lord. He says at that time, that person is saved. 
So would you do that with me right now? Just say this prayer with me out loud. Just say, Father God, today is the day that I make the decision to believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead to give me life. And right now, I accept that life. God, take my life. Do something with it. And according to your word, I'm forgiven, I'm cleansed, and I can be certain that I'll spend eternity with Almighty God. Now, if you said that prayer for the very first time, I want to encourage you to write us. Go to TreyJohnsonMinistries.com. Let us know the decision that you made. Ask for our, our uh, newsletter, our magazine. We'll get that in the mail to you. We want to help you grow in your relationship with God. You know, you can watch daily videos I do on all the social media uh, outlets. You can go to the YouTube channel. You can listen to podcasts. I write daily devotionals that go out. We want to be a part of your journey. We want to be a part of your growth. We want to be a part of your vision victory. And if you're watching this show and you've, you've never been a partner to this ministry, we, we want to encourage you to pray. Ask the Lord, am I supposed to partner with them? Am I supposed to pray for them? Am I supposed to, to sow seeds into their ministry? Because when you become a partner to this ministry, every person that's saved, healed, delivered, set free around the world, you're a part of that. You are a part of that, and that's an awesome thing to know. Hey, this is Trey Johnson with Being Your Best. Thank you for joining us today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. God bless you guys.